Welcome to Leaping Larry's Revolutionary Reading Theatre. It's time for us to do the reading. Bug's all ready too. You're all ready to learn, aren't you, Bug? Go for that. Look, look up here. No, not for the cords. Look up here. Mouse. After the cursor. Better. Much better. Right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be starting this work right here since this one is just short. We're going to do, and it's sort of like related to the on the Juje philosophy work that we've been reading. Do like this. Let's. Let's read this one last one to drive it home. Then we'll start uh, Eurocentrism in the Communist Movement. This one here is called Giving priority to ideological work is essential for accomplishing socialism. This one is from 1995 to 19. Give you a bug on screen as well for some for some extra eye candy. Hey bug. This is 1995. The most serious lesson of the collapse of socialism in several countries. Wow, I just like skipped a whole paragraph there. <laughs> Let's try that again. The world socialist movement, despite torturous events in the wake of socialism's collapse in a number of countries, is gradually restoring its vitality by learning lessons from its recent bitter history. Seeing the wretched situation in those countries, more and more people around the world have realized that the popular masses can only shape their destiny on the socialist road, and they long for and aspire to socialism. This shows that socialism is alive in people's minds, and that people are being awakened ideologically. The most serious lesson of the collapse of socialism in several countries is that the corruption of socialism begins with ideological corruption, that a breakdown on the ideological front results in the crumbling of all socialism's front and ends in the total ruin of socialism. To maintain socialism and lead it to victory, we must intensify ideological work. Only we hit when we have armed the popular masses with socialist ideology and strengthened the ideological bulwark of socialism and we consolidate and develop socialism and firmly defend it from any storm. This has been clearly proved by our revolutionary experience. Sleep behind me, bug. Can you go to sleep behind me? Huh? Why don't you come up, come up here beside me? Huh. Right there. Good spot. Good spot. What? Are you gonna eat my zipper? This cat. I wish you wouldn't bite metal. <laughs> you love biting metal, and that's kind of concerns me. To develop the socialist movement, it is now imperative for us to awaken the popular masses ideologically. Oh, I missed this one. It secures ideology. Socialism will triumph. If it loses ideology, socialism will go to ruin. This is the truth that has been substantiated by history. 
To develop the socialist movement, it is now imperative for us to awaken the popular masses ideologically and arouse them to the struggle for socialism. When the popular masses who are fighting for independence acquire socialist ideology and believe in socialism without a shadow of a doubt, socialism will go without fail to fresh victories. Chapter 1, this is the one we'll do first. Start with this today. Giving priority to ideological work is essential for accomplishing socialism. To successfully accomplish socialism, we must adhere to ideology by regarding it as the most important. We must give priority to ideological work over everything else. For a working class party which struggles for the masses' independence, no undertaking is more important than ideological work. Working class party is by nature a leading political organization which awakens the popular masses on the strength of ideology and which organizes them for the revolution and construction. Ideology is the only and the most powerful weapon of the working class party. Only when it holds fast to ideology as the main factor and does ideological work before all other work can the working class party fulfill its mission and duty as the leading political organization which sets the pace for the masses' independence. Without ideological work, it would be impossible for socialism to emerge, exist, and develop. Capitalism, an exploiting system which replaced feudal subordination with subordination by capital, grew up within the framework of feudal society. But socialism, a new system, radically different from all the exploiting systems, cannot grow up within the framework of capitalist society. Socialist ideology emerges as a reflection of the class demand of the exploited working masses fight against domination by capital. Socialist system is born of the struggle of the popular masses who are awakened to socialist ideology. It is consolidated and developed under the guidance of socialist ideology. And this point right here that he makes. Capitalism, an exploiting system which replaced feudal subordination with subordination of capital, grew up within the framework of feudal society. But socialism, a new system radically different from all the exploiting systems, cannot grow up within the framework of capitalist society. And that right there is why you cannot... It, it's almost like, like these these uh these Pat Sox or fucking Nuvo Trotskyists or Mecca incels or whatever the hell you want to call them, right? Like they're they're like it's like a it's just idealism in, in its core because it's like the same it's like the same belief that how you could just like abolish classes and have communism now it's sort of like that same belief but it's like they make it sound they make themselves sound a little bit more scientific by thinking oh the socialist revolution is the, is the like next step on our on our path to liberation on our path to communism but no so we're we have to have a democratic revolution before socialism is even possible again that the struggle for that democratic revolution, which, in, which of course entails liberation and land back, is the thing which helps train the masses of the need to go on further to a socialist revolution. And what all of these parties essentially want to do, the, at least in, in function and according to their party policies in the West, all of these communist parties want to essentially build communism in exactly that way by somehow having socialism get built up within the framework of capitalist society rather than building up a dual power that makes sense and then they hide behind um lenin's rhetoric about what what the soviets what the bolsheviks did in regards to bourgeois parliamentarism in their day 
they hide behind that and say, oh, well, we're participating in the elections and we're doing this and that to gauge the readiness of the masses, just like Lenin did in his day. See, here's what he said, work for them. It's this lack of creativity. It's like this flunkyism and dogmatism, like exactly what we're talking about is like this major problem that, you know, Juche arose in order to overcome these these things in Korea. They're not unique to Korea. It's like these problems are something that we face everywhere. Even in some of the most well-intentioned socialists and communists. Good idea to be able to recognize it. I mean... And like, because I said before, like an important factor in, in uh, elections today is in, in our analysis of what socialists should do in regards to elections, like we have to remember that elections are not the same as they used to be. And like in a national campaign, you're reaching, like you're spending so much and reaching much, much less people than you actually can in even just participating in local, local campaigns, I truly believe. Especially in working with, you know, alongside leadership of First Nations groups and like, and others like struggling for the liberation of uh, all colonized people here. And by the way, when we talk about settlers and we talk about colonized people, of course, uh, black people are not included in settlers. They are colonized people. Exactly, Marx. The resources spent on that national election campaign could be spent on helping so many people. And think about how much that would influence their ability to uh, be ideologically influenced by like socialist and communist ideas. Instead of what? You, it looks like they're doing the same thing. You know, they're just like running an election, but preaching about working class values and all this other stuff and, and socialist and communist values. But it's like the more you actually are, able, are building up a dual power and combining that with your ideology, that's because that's like putting your ideology in practice while then also teaching them about why you're, why you're doing the thing you do, why you care. Because a revolution is uh, the thing which seeks to bring love for the people into bloom. Make love for the people, not just a law, but, you know, something that eventually humanity be tra is transformed into something that is like that core tenant. Socialist ideology emerges as a reflection of the class demand of the exploited working masses who fight against domination of capital. The socialist system is born of the struggle of the popular masses who were awakened to socialist ideology. It is consolidated and developed under the guidance of socialist ideology. Socialist society is guided by socialist ideology and developed mainly on the impetus of this ideology. Unlike capitalist society, where money rules everything, socialist society is essentially characterized by the fact that it develops based on the strength of ideology, by the conscious activities of people armed with socialist ideology. Consolidation, development, and destiny of socialism depend on how ideological work is done, and how people are prepared ideologically. Only when ideological work is given preference and steadily intensified in socialist society is it possible to ensure that political, ideological unity of society strengthen and develop socialist social relationships with comradely unity and cooperation as the main factors and to successfully build the socialist economy? Only when the ideological bulwark of socialism is fortified can socialism be indestructible in politics, economics, culture, and military affairs. Blighting ideological work when building socialism amounts to overlooking the key to socialism. 
This mistake will inevitably result in the corruption collapse of socialism. The ideological work of the working class party, which fights for socialism, in it is an ideological and theoretical undertaking to develop socialist ideology in depth in order to meet modern day requirements and those of the developing revolution. The working class party's ideological work is also education for inculculating socialist ideology in the popular masses. Socialist ideology and theories evolve on the basis of generalizing modern day demands and revolutionary experience, while the revolutionary working class struggle develops. Socialist ideology and theories serve as the popular masses ideological and theoretical weapon in their struggle for socialism, and as their guide in that struggle. The circumstances and conditions of the revolutionary struggle are not immutable. History advances and the situation constantly changes and develops. Changes in the times and the developing situation raise a host of problems which existing socialist theories cannot solve. The working class party must pay close attention to ideological and theoretical activities to develop socialist ideology in step with the changes in the times, the progress of the revolution and construction. If socialist ideology suffers from revisionist degeneration or a dogmatic stagnation due to incorrect ideological and theoretical work on the part of the working class party, Socialism will lose its correct guideline, it will encounter twists and turns, and end in failure. In some countries which were building socialism in the past, some countries, socialist was distorted and made degenerate by renegade revolutionaries who became entrenched in the party and state leadership. As a consequence, Socialism lost its direction. It went off the rails and invited the return of capitalism. A torturous event that happened to the socialist revolution and construction, the collapse of socialism in some countries, are ultimately consequences of the poverty and degeneration of scientific revolutionary ideas and theories. The working class party must not only evolve a correct guiding ideology theories to accomplish socialism, but must also inculculate them efficiently in the popular masses. Firmly arming the popular masses with socialist ideology is a decisive guarantee for strengthening the motive force of socialist society and for enhancing its role, so as to move the revolution and construction forward at full steam. Effective education of the popular masses and socialist ideology enables us to awaken them ideologically and organize them solidly. It encourages them to fulfill their responsibility and role as the driving force of socialism as the masters of the state and society. When they fight with a high level of ideological consciousness and in close unity, Popular masses can display immeasurable strength and wisdom, transform nature and society immensely. An incomparable advantage in the indestructible strength of socialism lies in the fact that it gives full play to the unfathomable strength and wisdom of the popular masses, the makers of history. This is precisely the advantage and strength of socialist ideology, which are ensured by political work. Parties in some countries, which were building socialism in the past, clung to economic construction alone. They took a dogmatic approach to preceding socialist theory, 
failed to pay due attention to educating the popular masses. Therefore, they made economic construction itself stagnate and, in the long run, pulled the socialist system down and went the length of reviving capitalism. Opportunists and renegade socialists abandoned ideological work in socialist society and encouraged people to be egotistic and selfish. They spread bourgeois ideology, which regards money as omnipotent, among people by adopting the capitalist method of using financial incentives. They echoed reactionary bourgeois propaganda, which preached the effectiveness and advantage of capitalist market economy. They proclaimed a mixed economy, destroyed the economic system based on socialist ownership. It is beyond dispute that the opportunist, renegade socialist maneuvers were an anti-socialist, counter-revolutionary scheme to distort socialism, paralyze its superiority, and open up the way to the fall of socialism and the return of capitalism, to please the imperialists. The process of the breakdown of socialism in a number of countries teaches us the serious lesson that if one overlooks ideology and abandons ideological work in socialist society, this will make people ideologically sick. It will corrupt and destroy everything socialist. If the ideological bulwark falls down, socialism will be unable to defend itself, no matter how great its economic and military power may be. On the other hand, it proves how great a role ideology plays and how important ideological work is to accomplish socialism. The need to stick to, to ideology as the main factor and to give priority to ideological work to accomplish socialism arises from the Juche outlook on the role of ideological consciousness in human activity. As we talked about in the uh, Juche philosophy work that we've already read, for the first time in history, the Juche idea made it clear the truth that humanity is an independent and creative being who transforms the world and shapes their destiny with their own strength, and that the consciousness of independence plays the decisive role in shaping humanity's destiny. Many factors are at work in human activity. To which of these factors decisive significance is attached is very important in social development and in shaping human destiny. Previously, the factor with a decisive effect on human activity was mainly sought outside humanity. Religious and idealist views claimed that some mysterious, supernatural being outside humanity governed humanity's activity and decided their destiny. The absurdity of these views had already been proved by science. Get a hairball. Hold on, bug. Oh, hold on one second. Are you gonna offer bug? I'm eating all here. Hold on. Come back up. Okay, sorry about that. The absurdity of these views has already been proved by science. 
The materialist view sought the decisive factor on human activity in objective material conditions. Humanity is a product of the material world's development. Humanity lives and works in the material world, so their activity cannot help being affected by objective material conditions. But objective conditions do not directly cause humanity's activity. Well, they, they, they pave the way, right? We are part of it, so of course the objective material conditions and laws affect us, but they do not directly cause our human our activity. We I hope we all are understanding the distinction here. It's very important. It's like such a key thing for whether you're going to actually understand what this is saying or whether you are going to uh, misinterpret this. I find. So, the objective conditions do not directly cause humanity's activity. They influence our activity only through our consciousness. Humanity is a social being who works independently, creatively, and consciously. As such, they are not merely affected by objective conditions, but actively transform them and makes positive use of them. Ideological consciousness plays the decisive role in human activity because it reflects humanity's demands and interests. Ideological consciousness governs all their activities, serves as the prime mover which propels them to struggle to transform the world. True, knowledge which reflects the laws of the objective world plays an important role in humanity's activity. Only when they have scientific knowledge can humanity make rational use of their own strength in objective conditions. Keeping with objective laws. in keeping with objective laws and transform the world successfully. We're on a little ad break here. So everybody gets a little bug bonus. Everybody gets a b little buggy bonus for the ad break. Oh no, we lost the camera, bug. We lost the camera. Go on, bug. Here she is. Hey, Meg. Hey, welcome in. Well, now you're so close. I put the camera over here now. Lag. Don't go for the cord. Yeah, there. Say hi to say hi to the comrades. That's where they are, bug. They're in here. They're in here. They're in there. They're in here. They're in here, bug. Bug, bug, bug. He is a little bug. What do you see, bug? Wait. It's a bug break. For three minute ad breaks, you get bug breaks. Excuse me, bug. What do you think you're doing? You want to subscribe to the channel just for the big, big screen bug breaks.
You're cute, bug. Awful cute for a little kitten. Are you getting in, bug? <laughs> She's trying. She almost just walked off the table trying to get it. All right, well, we are back. Okay, I just want to reiterate this paragraph. So we'll just start with this paragraph one more time. Ideological consciousness plays the decisive role in human activity. Oh, I see some. By the way, comrades, if you do enjoy my work, you know, uh, think about uh, you. You should think about supporting my work, as that keeps me streaming, and uh, you know, paying for band aids from bug biting me. Got to pay for those bug band aids. The best way to support a course is through PayPal. But if you prefer Jeff Bezos' officiated channels. That is uh, very much appreciated as well. Gift subs, subbies, uh, biddies, whatever they, they call the things. And uh, I see there would be some good recipients in chat, so just putting that out there. And you get the best emotes, best little pictures on the internet. Oh yeah, and I forgot, I also have to I also have to set up the goals. Oh, oh no, I don't. Never mind. The goal is already set up. Perfect. I've got some literature in my car that will change your whole way of thinking. Well, goddamn, cinnamon, cinnamon. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Strin Sam, for the biddies, comrade. Very much appreciated. Thank you, comrades. Cinnamon, nine months. Pretty close to that OG status. He's a communist. Oh, really? Yep. Big communist. Big, big communist. Oh. <laughs> True. Bug, bug can tell you. Right, Bug? <laughs> You're funny. All right. <laughs> Let's continue where we read. I'll start this paragraph over again. Ideological consciousness plays the decisive role in human activity because it reflects humanity's demands and interests. Ideological consciousness governs all their activities, serves as the prime mover which propels them to struggle to transform the world. True. Knowledge, which reflects the laws of the objective world, plays an important role in, hu in humanity's activity. Only when they have scientific knowledge can humanity make rational use of their own strength and objective conditions in keeping with the objective laws and transform the world successfully. Knowledge of science and technology plays an ever greater role and development of social productive forces. It's all for one motherfucker and one motherfucker for all motherfuckers everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Oh damn. Ryland, thank you so much, comrade, for two gift subs. Boo Fighter and Synaptic Prune? Thank you, comrade. Appreciate that. Salute. Thank you, comrade. So much. I didn't mean to go away. I meant to put this camera away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, knowledge, which reflects the laws of the objective world, plays an important role in humanity's activity. Hey, Bob, welcome in. Only when they have scientific knowledge can humanity make rational use of their own strength and objective conditions in keeping with the objective laws. 
and transform the world successfully. <laughs> knowledge of science and knowledge of science and technology. Hey, this guy's a commie! Oh shit! Commie, oh. Commie, oh. Into our country. oh my god! Thank you, comrades. What the fuck? Five? Get in there. Pack these boss cars full of weed just like this, okay? Okay, sense? Jacob, you're in control. Don't yeah, you fuck up. Okay, boys, this is it. Let's fucking move it. Boys, I got the Swayze Express. Good. Load it in the car. Comrade. We gotta hook up with Sebastian in six hours. The whole world's searching for that train, you idiot. You won't even make it to Shitville. All right, well, Long you know... Long live the Paypal's revolution! Thank you, comrades. Thank you. Well, you've collectively earned yourself... The Juche Gang theme song, heaven ya. I would have been friends with Stalin. You'd think I'd have this saved somewhere by now, but nope. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go, smokes. Lil Pump. Let's go, smokes. Juche Gang. Oh, self reliance. Okay, I'll grab that. I'll grab that <laughs> puff too in just a D second. DPRK. To say that socialism doesn't work is to overlook the fact that it did work and it worked for hundreds of millions of people. To say that socialism doesn't work is to overlook the fact that it did work and it worked for hundreds of millions of people. That's Bob. Here's Bob. Here's some bug to heal you. Where to go spread some coming man. Yeah. Juju gang, juju gang, juju gang. Manuk more supreme than you crook. You got health care you can't afford. Still slinging Juju in the jets. Jets. Korea and Kima making better meds. None of these camps be new to me except stuff seeing kids that are called the theory. Got some red suits on the boards. Fuck your army, fuck your brutal team. Beat your critics with expressive sadness. America's the most fun to madness. King Young Rush, show no tenderness. America's strategy is crying about the status. Everybody screaming, fuck to you, West. Give me a GPRK quote. North Korea controlling the ICBM tech. If America got attack, we're wrecking right back. Chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang. Spread three wrecks on some new grain, huh? My granny love doing chuchi, huh? I fucking pierce off a gun and name, yeah. I can't buy a bin of bougie thing, huh? Ready to go and spread some coming meme, yeah. Chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang. Chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang. Spread three wrecks on some new grain, huh? My granny love doing chuchi, huh? I fucking pierce off a gun and name, yeah. I can't buy a bin of bougie thing, huh? Ready to go and spread some coming meme, yeah. Chuchi gang, chuchi gang, chuchi gang. Yeah. That's it. Another hit. From your boy. Oh. Alright, someone redeemed a, a communist quote as well. You definitely earned that. You definitely earned that theme song. Congratulations, comrades, and fucking thank you. That means a ton. It goes a long way. Here's your communist quote. I said I'd give you a DPRK one. Capitalists are very cunning. They leave no stone unturned to maintain their position. They rear labor aristocrats among the working class and put them up to disorganize the ranks of the working class movement. Here lies one of the major reasons why revolution does not break out in the developed capitalist countries now. Right, Bug? Tired. Oh damn, the old the old teeth falling out dream, huh, Bob? Classic. Classic dream. Alright. <laughs> now let's continue our read. And then I will grab I will I don't worry, I didn't forget about the 420 redeem GMO. I'm just gonna finish our read because we're close to the end. And then I will, uh, and then I will, uh, grab the 420 redeem. I got, I got a bunch of other content for us here too. And then we'll do gaming and chatting about socialism, communism, settler colonialism.
Can I get a hell yeah? Thank you for that hype train, by the way. Thank you, comrades. Appreciate all your support. True knowledge. Sorry, I should say it more like true. Knowledge, which reflects the laws of the objective world, plays an important role in humanity's activity. Only when they have scientific knowledge can humanity make rational use of their own strength and objective conditions. In keeping with objective laws and the transformation of the world successfully, knowledge of science and technology plays an ever greater role in the development of social productive forces. Nevertheless, the purpose and direction of humanity's activity are defined and the process of their activity is regulated and controlled by their ideological consciousness. How a, hum how a person makes, how a person uses their knowledge and how high their creative ability they display depend on what kind of ideology they have. Only a person with the idea of serving the popular masses can devote their knowledge, skill, wisdom, and talent to work for the popular masses. Ideological consciousness, which reflects humanity's inherent desire as master of the world, as one who transforms the world, is consciousness of independence. Consciousness of independence is the consciousness of being the master of one's own destiny. It is the desire to shape one's own destiny. Only when a person has consciousness of independence can they transform the world positively and shape their destiny well. Socialist ideology represents the highest stage in the development of consciousness of independence. It reflects humanity's desire for independence and collectivism. As such, it is the most powerful ideological weapon, transforming nature and society, and for shaping humanity's destiny. It also serves as the ideological basis of solid social unity and cohesion. Ideological work for equipping the popular masses, socialist ideology, is the key to giving rein to the advantage of socialism, increasing its strength, and accelerating the revolution in construction. Socialist economic relations are the economic material basis of socialist ideology. Socialist economic relations, whose major component is socialist ownership, provide the popular masses with material conditions for them to acquire and consolidate socialist ideology. Therefore, the consolidation and development of socialist economic relations have a major effect on equipping the popular masses with socialist ideology. As March and I were saying earlier, instead of spending a whole bunch of money on, say, like a national presidential campaign, you could have used that money to feed a lot of people and combine that with your ideological struggle and had it be much more influential, weighing on people's minds. Therefore, the consolidation and development of socialist economic relations have a major effect on equipping the popular masses with socialist ideology. Now, of course, you also have to, and the thing that PSL and, and all of the socialist countries and the big socialist streamers, even, they all leave out is settler colonialism and they be living in America or something, you know? They just, like, always fail to connect that very important thing. Therefore, the consolidation and development of socialist economic relations have a major effect on equipping the popular masses with socialist ideology. The socioeconomic basis for the emergence of open-minded ideas disappears with the establishment of the socialist system. However, ideological, technological, and cultural back backwardness handed down from the old society and various other related vestiges remain for a historical period. These serve as a hotbed for the growth of non-socialist ideological elements. To solidify it, all members, to solidly arm all members of socialist society with socialist ideology, 
we must preserve socialist ownership. We must steadily consolidate and develop socialist economic relations and gradually overcome the vestiges of old society remain in socio-economic relations and many other areas of social life. If remnants of old society and socialist society are encouraged to grow, or capitalist economic management methods are introduced into socialist economic management, or worse still, if capitalist ownership is revived by encroaching upon socialist ownership, this will result in the economic material basis of socialist ideology being pulled down and conditions created for the growth of individualism, selfishness, and other bourgeois ideas. Hey K, welcome in comrade. If there's any mods in chat, please give a shout out to K. How do you say? Love to see you here. Private ownership inevitably private ownership inevitably gives birth to individualism and bourgeois ideas inevitably grow and spread on the soil of capitalist ownership and the capitalist market economy. Socialism is incompatible with private ownership and the capitalist market economy. Notice they're making a distinction there. Because socialist economic... Socialist market economic um, activity is a way to in order to build the full socialist system. Even if socialist system has been established and firm economic and material foundations for socialism laid, people do not acquire socialist ideology automatically. Look at her crossing her arms. Imbuing people with socialist ideology means an ideological struggle between the old and the new in the ideological area. It is an undertaking to transform ideology by eliminating open-minded ideas from people's minds and equipping them with the new socialist ideology. Bourgeois and all other open-minded reactionary ideas are based on individualism. Exploitative societies were all based on individualism, and the people in these societies were tainted with individualism for thousands of years. Individualism is an obstinate, conservative idea which is deeply rooted in people's consciousness, customs, and lives. Even in socialist society, individualism and other open-minded ideas persist to a great deal and, when even small chances present themselves, these ideas will sprout again, spread far and wide. Socialist ideology is a new ideology, fundamentally different from all kinds of outmoded ideas which are based on individualism. The work of eradicating outmoded ideas from people's minds and equipping them with the new socialist ideology is an ideological revolution to radically change their ideological lives. It can only be done through tireless and positive ideological education and ideological struggle. Without struggling against the outmoded ideas remaining in socialist society and against reactionary ideas like bourgeois ideas with in, which infiltrate from the outside, it would be impossible to root out the outmoded ideas lingering in people's minds. And without vigorously educating people to imbue them with socialist ideology, it would be impossible to transform their ideology. On the one hand, renegade socialists abandon the work of arming people with socialist ideology. And, on the other, they created ideological confusion among people under slogans of glasnost, openness, and pluralism. They threw open the door to admit reactionary bourgeois ideas and culture, claiming glasnost and pluralism in socialist society is, in the long run, a counter-revolutionary scheme for undermining socialist society by obliterating socialist ideology, introducing reactionary bourgeois ideas. In the past, quite a few parties took a mechanical approach 
to the historical materialist proposition that the material and economic conditions of society determine social consciousness, and that social consciousness changes with the changes in material and economic conditions. They believe that when people's material and cultural standards became high with the establishment of a socialist system and the promotion of socialist construction, their ideological consciousness would be transformed accordingly. Therefore, they did not pay great attention to ideological work, believing that people's ideological consciousness will spontaneously change along socialist lines after the socialist transformation of the material and economic conditions in society. This is a wrong concept. It is contrary to the essence characteristics of socialist ideology and the socialist transformation of ideology. By nature, a human's consciousness reflects objective reality, but how they absorb this depends on the person themselves, on their preparedness. Good morning, NTC. They see, hear, feel, and absorb as much as they can, as much as they can understand what ideology they acquire and how this ideology changes and develops depend on their preparedness, their activities, and the ideological influence they receive. Even a, even a person from the property class can become a revolutionary when they are awakened ideologically and put under a constant revolutionary influence, and not even a working class person acquires and not even a working class person necessarily acquires a revolutionary ideology, as we know. If you live in the West, you're well aware of that second part of that statement, right? And not even a working class person necessarily acquires a revolutionary ideology, simply because they're working class. It is clear that where outmoded ideas linger in the people's minds in socialist society, and where reactionary ideas from outside continually infiltrate and have an influence, the transformation of all members of society through education, the new socialist ideology cannot go ahead smoothly of its own accord. Even though the socialist system has been established and the material and economic conditions have been created, even though every condition that benefit the has been provided for the people, and socialist society for their independent and creative lives, they may take these for granted and fail to keenly feel how valuable the socialist system is, how much they owe it. If ideological work is not carried out efficiently, and if ideological work is not carried out, people's revolutionary enthusiasm may gradually cool down. The tendency to live in comfort may grow among them, since they are free from any worries in socialist society and continue to lead stable lives. Then they cannot devote themselves to the struggle for socialism, or still, they may be duped by misleading imperialist and reactionary propaganda to harboring illusions about capitalism and going the length of betraying socialism. This is testified by how socialism collapsed in several countries which abandoned ideological work, and open their door to ideological and cultural infiltration of imperialism. Ideological education and ideological struggle are the most powerful methods of transforming people by educating them in socialist ideology. Our experience shows that if ideological work is conducted vigorously to equip people with socialist ideology and socialist society, People from all walks of life can be transformed along socialist lines. The cause of socialism is a historic cause to be carried out over several generations. It is the cause of the masses' independence. It is the cause for the masses' independence, carried, conducted amid a fierce struggle against imperialists and reactionaries of all shades. Ideological work must be developed in depth as socialism advances. The more intensive the maneuvers of socialism's enemies become, 
and more should ideological work be stepped up. Taking ideology as the basic factor and giving priority to ideological work is the key to triumphantly advancing and consummating and consum consummating the cause of socialism. And what happened to my comprehension there at the end? There you go. That's chapter one. Next time we read tomorrow, we'll be starting on chapter two. Quote, um, in socialist society, the struggle to color the whole society with socialist ideology. And by the way, part of my goal with helping you understand uh, socialism as well and, and Juche is giving you additional tools in order to analyze socialist society itself and thus be able to better defend not just DPRK, but all existing socialist countries, right? So that you can see their trajectory forward by not simply examining their um, economic aspect, which is important, but not the most important. And instead that we can examine their ideological aspects, right? We can, we can examine all these other important factors of revolution, which are, by the way, more in indicative of where the rev revolution is at and more reflective of things like the anti-colonial struggle, etc., right? Because eventually, with socialism and communism, of course, you can imagine, although we're a long ways away, you can imagine that with socialism and communism, eventually you reach a point where you have... Uh, a distribution that is meeting the needs of everybody so sufficiently that those kind of purely economic analysis are no longer useful for determining what stage of the revolution you're even in. Get what I'm saying? So anyway, next time when we come back, Moro will be starting on chapter two of this work here. I think this is a good one. Then once we are done 